the Intel's uh, a year old uh, Broadwell processor i7 5700HQ and compare with i7 6700HQ. Uh, so, some 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 quick things and then we will see which one is faster slower and but before we do that and compare the benchmark let us take a look at some of their specifications the mm, the Skylac is is is, is they are both recently launched processor that is in the second quarter and this one in the third quarter some quick launches and it is always good for the users to look for something new and every time. Uh, we have uh, both of them are quad cores and the number of threads are the same support for the hyper thread. So, latest and the fastest in in the Broadwell and the Skylac lines. We, we have on the power envelope they should be about the same because both of them are same uh, follow the same 40, 40 nanometer lithography. Uh, in terms of in terms of the um, bus uh, between the processor and the chipset we have slightly faster DMI 3 in Skylac that can go up to 8 giga transfer per second, but you will need to uh, have or all your PCI expresses working at their peak uh, transfer rate to be able to make that difference visible. So, with this background let us take a look at their pass mark score, we do not have a lot of samples for this uploads, but it does show uh, that the i7-5700HQ is at 8591 and i7-6700H is slower at 7603 and that is not something um, very visible from this data sheet that shows that their processor clock frequencies are about the same of course, in slightly faster for 5700HQ, but that is not something and that can uh, make up for that much of difference as is shown is at 8591 versus 760C. So, what it has to do is the integrated graphics which is HD graphics 5600 versus HD graphics 530. The the pass mark score also take into account the integrated graphics performance when it calculates the um, the final score, and that's the one reason that we can think of that these two CPUs are so much different in their benchmark score. So, that that is what it is uh, when the processor performance should be about the same or maybe slightly in favor of Broadwell, I would keep it about the same because the difference if any would not be that much visible, but you get a much faster integrated graphics when you go with the older Broadwell processor when compared to the Skylab processor and that is very good for gaming. It's possible that the the, the the notebooks that come with this Broadwell processor they have has a uh, it has a additional graphics chip on it, uh, but both of them will combine to give you even better performance in gaming and all these things. If you are not into gaming, uh, you, can, you get about the same performance from these two processors. Let us take a look at their prices. Intel has kept the prices same at 378 dollars and that if that is the case if assuming you have a same price for a desktop for Broadwell as well as Skylab, you might want to go with the older Broadwell as it is the same or the overall better performance and you do not pay anything extra, but assuming that this price is passed in for the similar spec for the Broadwell as well as the Skylab. I hope this uh, video makes sense to you. Thanks for taking a look.